This guy wants to break you, humiliate you, stomp you into the ground. Now what are you going to do about it? Terry Silver, the main villain of Karate Kid Part 3. The Karate Kid franchise has seen a huge resurgence with the popularity of the Cobra Kai series, and now's a great time to look at why Terry Silver rocks and whether we might see him again in the future. I'm Ken Cole. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to your comments. The Karate Kid series is known in part for its memorable villains. Part 1 had Johnny and his Cobra Kai karate friends, and their evil teacher John Kreese. The second movie had Mr. Miyagi's former best friend Sato, and Sato's nephew Chosen. Part 3 brings back John Kreese, but introduces a brand new villain, John Kreese's best friend, Vietnam War buddy and Cobra Kai karate master, Terry Silver, played by Thomas Ian Griffith in his first movie role. Following the events of Karate Kid Part 2, where Kreese attacks Johnny in the All Valley Tournament parking lot, Kreese is broke and on the streets. Turns out attacking his own students was bad for business, and no one wants to take karate at Cobra Kai anymore. As Kreese hits rock bottom, he turns to his old friend, Terry Silver, who lives in a Frank Lloyd Wright mansion in the hills of Los Angeles. Terry is a fellow master of Cobra Kai karate, which he and Kreese seem to have learned during their time in the military. In fact, we learn that Terry Silver was the one who bankrolled Kreese's Cobra Kai dojo from the beginning. I'll pay you that back rent as soon as I can. Screw the rent. What, you think I bought that place for the rent? I bought it for you. Terry also feels indebted to Kreese for saving his life in Vietnam, and it seems that he'd do anything for Kreese. I owe you, man. You don't owe me anything. Oh, bullshit. I don't owe you anything? What about Vietnam, huh? How many times did you save my ass? Kreese tells Terry what happened with his dojo, and Terry vows to take full revenge on Daniel Miyagi. When I'm finished with that kid, he'll be begging me to be his teacher. And you know what he's going to learn from me? Pain in every part of his body and fear in every part of his mind. So why is Terry Silver so amazing? Well, part of it is he's just a lot of fun. He's larger than life. He has a combination of skills and qualities that I'm pretty sure no human being has ever had while wearing a ponytail. He enjoys being evil so much. He's the only Karate Kid villain who has a whole musical theme written for him by composer Bill Conti. But also, he has a lot of qualities the movie never fully develops. Qualities that aren't over the top and make for a good realistic villain in the Karate Kid universe. In fact, Terry Silver actually has a lot going for him. He's charismatic, Good looking, intelligent, extremely wealthy, has a taste for fashion and style. He's ambitious, he's a martial arts expert. He's a Vietnam veteran. He has excellent public presentation skills. Honesty, compassion, and fair play. Thank you all for coming. He has excellent business and negotiation skills. He's a perfectionist. Yeah, he's perfect. 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 He's persuasive. He's very effective at teaching. His employees seem reasonably satisfied working for him, even though he's making them do illegal things. You know it. And he appears to be loyal to his allies. Of course, even though he has a lot going for him, he's also a villain. In fact, he's a doozy of a villain, and he does a lot of bad things. For example, he's manipulative craves revenge. Through his company Dynatox, he harms the environment through dumping chemical and nuclear waste. What do you mean you can't dump it in Borneo? Who in Borneo knows what chloride sludge is? He corrupts those around him, his friends, enemies, <laughs> and employees. Mr. Silver. Lighten up, Margaret. He encourages vices, example, Crease in Tahiti. Uh, you just have fun. Go give Mamona and her girlfriend a squeeze for me. How do you know about Mamona? I know. <laughs> he uses profanity. Don't bullshit me. He uses ethnic slurs. He emotionally manipulates others into becoming instruments of pain. Okay, you got it? He pledges full-time devotion to evil plans. The next few weeks, my business is strictly revenge. Everything is in place, sir. He delights in being petty. Well, that's a nice little move. Mr. Miyagi teach you that? Oh, no, no. No, I didn't think so. <laughs> he lies to everyone. John Kreese told me you had a lot of heart. Oh, yeah? He engages in conspiracy to commit crimes, including faking the death of his friend. I buried John last week. He's dead? What happened? 
He bribes public officials and grand juries. What else? Uh, the grand jury. What do you intend to do about them? Bribe them, as usual. He negotiates evil deals in a bubble bath. Well, I don't know if I can afford more than 35. He breaks and enters into Miyagi's home. He breaks his agreements and promises. Hey, where's that guy with my money? He inflicts bodily harm on children, intends to inflict bodily harm on senior citizens. He enjoys watching people suffer. He sits menacingly in dark cars while puffing cigars and has an epic evil laugh. <laughs> I think the only bad thing he doesn't do is kill someone. But actually, that's not Terry's style. He's uh, much more intrigued by the petty things in life. I think it's just a lot more fun to pick on people. One great thing about Terry for fans of the Cobra Kai series is that he provides a lot of background and lore of the Cobra Kai school and fighting style. He was the one who bought the original Cobra Kai dojo so Kreese could teach karate. From Terry, we first learned Cobra Kai's catchphrase. Cobra Kai, say it! Cobra Kai, never dies. Bet your ass. We also learned the name of the man who might have been Kreese and Terry's sensei. My master is Kim Sung Young of South Korea. And of course, there's the Quicksilver method. It comes in two parts and has three rules. I call it Quicksilver. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you like that, huh? Rule number one, a man can't stand, he can't fight. A man can't breathe, he can't fight. A man can't see, he can't fight. Out! <laughs> Here we learn the Cobra Kai style in a way that was probably too brutal even for Kreese to teach. In fact, you can make a case that John Kreese, the ultimate baddie from Karate Kid 1, wouldn't be nearly as bad a person if it weren't for Terry Silver. At the beginning of part three, Kreese has hit rock bottom and he goes to Terry to return the dojo keys and give up. This could be a life-changing turnaround moment for John Kreese, but Terry Silver immediately tells him, Hey, you're not listening to me. Come on, snap out of it. And he sends him to Tahiti. Terry Silver has been motivating and enabling Kreese's bad behavior for a long time. To use a Star Wars analogy, if Kreese is the Darth Vader of the Karate Kid movies, then Terry Silver is the Emperor. <laughs> Terry Silver is known for being an over-the-top movie villain. And yes, he can go over the top. Well, that means Cobra Kai karate! John Kreese's karate! But people forget that for a good chunk of the movie, Terry's actually pretty restrained. Look, I got a good book on sweep techniques. I'll drop it off for you sometime, okay? Nice. Especially when he's conning Daniel and Miyagi. I was hoping you would have killed him. <laughs> no, no, that's not what karate's about. It's for defense. Yeah, yeah, I know you're right. In fact, he comes off as so sincere. Both Miyagi and Daniel totally buy it. My teacher sends his apologies for John Kreese's dishonorable actions. Accept apology. When Terry is first manipulating Daniel into becoming his student, you kind of wonder, does Terry Silver have some good in him? In this movie, he doesn't. But I think the best part of the movie is Terry Silver's transition from fake friend to evil mentor that corrupts Daniel. He has a lot of parallels to Mr. Miyagi. They're both karate masters. They're both effective teachers. Miyagi was a veteran of World War II and Terry was a veteran of Vietnam. They both suffered trauma while serving their country. War does something to a man. You had to have been there to know what I mean. I've been. Do not. For me, one of the most interesting moments is when Terry Silver breaks into Miyagi's house and snoops through his keepsakes. There's a moment when he sees Miyagi's Medal of Honor and he has this look of awe and jealousy combined. Like, America recognized Miyagi as a hero, but passed over Vietnam vets like Terry Silver and John Kreese. And it's a shame the movie never really develops any of this, because Terry Silver really is the anti-Miyagi. Mr. Miyagi is famous for his sayings. You trust uh, quality, what you know, not quantity. For a person with no forgiveness in heart, living even worse punishment than death. Lie become truth only if person want to believe it. But Terry Silver has a few of his own sayings, which kind of ring true. There are three things that make a champion. The three Ds. Desire, devotion, and discipline. Everybody has a right to his opinion. Extreme situations require extreme measures. 
My favorite that I've remembered my entire life is nothing's for free because it's absolutely 100% true. Of course, a lot of the credit for Terry Silver goes to actor Thomas Ian Griffith. According to a 1993 interview in Black Belt Magazine, Griffith had been starring on and off Broadway when he was cast as Terry Silver, but he'd been cast for his acting ability. The producers didn't know that he was a martial artist. It was only when Pat Johnson saw Griffith's skills that they started rewriting the script to make Terry Silver a martial artist, and presumably an evil karate mentor to Daniel. It seems like Thomas Ian Griffith may have single-handedly saved the character of Terry Silver. And he gave a great performance. I mean, how many actors could sit in a bubble bath, tell his henchman on a golden phone to dump chloride sludge, then light up a cigar with his secretary right there, tell her to bribe the DA, and negotiate a deal for 50% ownership of his dojos with Karate's bad boy and make it all work. Two quick notes about that scene. Notice that before, Terry promised Kreese 100% ownership of the new dojos. I bought 20 locations today, yours, 100%. But in this bubble bath scene, he negotiates 50% to Mike Barnes. Do you fight as hard as you negotiate? Harder. You got your 50%. And I get that in writing. By noon today. So is he really the best friend to Crease that everyone says he is? Or is he gonna screw Crease over? Or is he gonna screw Mike Barnes over? Also, notice the name of the DA that Terry wants to bribe. Who's the DA on the case? Uh, Mr. Cole. That's my last name. But in the Cobra Kai series, that's also the last name of Tom Cole, who is Daniel's dealership rival. Coincidence? I thought The Karate Kid was done decades ago, but I've been blown away by Cobra Kai. It's a great show. I never would have guessed that we'd have The Karate Kid now in 2020. It's also brought up the potential of the return of Terry Silver. So will he return to Cobra Kai? Will he make an appearance in the series? I'm not sure but I think it's likely. As I'm recording this, we're just days away from season three releasing. The first two seasons have explicitly mentioned or visually shown Terry Silver. Crease drops a lot of hints in season two about Terry Silver. What's interesting to me is that all the characters in the Karate Kid movies were pretty self-contained to their movies. For instance, Sato doesn't have any relation to Johnny or Crease, And so Cobra Kai makes it possible to have Terry Silver interact with Johnny. And that's fascinating because we know Johnny has no clue who Terry Silver is. So if he shows up, it's gonna be a great surprise. And I think the potential is limitless. He's a person with infinite resources, he's very cunning, and he is directly connected to the Cobra Kai lore. So, you know, the sky's the limit, and I'm just very excited that uh, the producers, they've done such a great job of being true to the characters of the original story, that if they bring Terry Silver into the series, that they will write a part for him that is truly worthy of the character. So let's all see what happens. Thank you for watching. And again, I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments and be sure to subscribe to my channel. Assassin!